The Counterpane Fairy. Dear little Teddy had taken ill and was rather bored of having nothing to do and no one to play with all week. Hannah! Hannah! What is it, Teddy? Hannah, where's Mama? I want to ask her something. Oh, Teddy, your Mama was up taking care of you all night. She has just gone to lie down for a bit. We wouldn't want to wake her up, would we? But I really want to ask her something. Why don't you tell me what you want to ask her? Maybe I can help you out. Well, I want to ask her if I may have a cracker today and not just milk and gruel. Oh, no, Teddy, you may not. You know that the doctor has said that you mustn't have anything but milk and gruel, don't you? I am sure that soon when you are all better, you can have all the crackers you want. Call me if you need anything else. Teddy lay in bed, feeling lonely and miserable. He wished his mama would come over and read him a story. He wished he could go out and play. He wished he could just eat a cracker, if nothing else. Little did he know that a visitor was about to arrive. Oh my! Oh my! What a climb! Who are you? Who do you think? I am the counterpane fairy. I have no idea who or what this is. Well, it's a bed sheet. We, the counterpane fairies, live amongst people, in their houses, and watch out for little children like you, Teddy. Would you like me to show you a story, Teddy? You mean, tell me a story? No, no. I mean, show you a story. Okay, you will see what I mean. Let's play a game. Choose any one of the squares on the counterpane. Go on, choose one. Hmm, all right. I think I will choose that bright yellow one. All right, then. Just keep looking at it, and don't turn your eyes away until I finish counting to seven times seven. Then you shall see the story of your yellow square. One, two, three, four. Don't look away from your square. Forty-seven, forty-eight, forty-nine... You see that castle up there, Teddy? In that castle lives an enchanted princess. She has been asleep for a hundred years, waiting for her hero to come and rescue her. You could be the hero who dispels her hundred-year-long slumber and rescues her, if you will. Come with me, Teddy. Teddy was besides himself with disbelief. He could hardly recognize his own self. He looked taller, stronger, and was dressed in clothes befitted a prince. I will do it. I will save the princess. So off went Teddy up the winding stairs to rescue the princess of the Golden Castle. Be brave, Teddy. Be strong. And beware of what is little and gray. Hello? Anybody there? A sinking feeling overcame Teddy as he opened the castle door and walked in. The large front hall had five walls. Three of those walls had tall doors, one studded with diamonds, the other with rubies, and the third with emeralds. The question was, behind which of those doors lay the enchanted princess? As Teddy stood there soaking it all in, he heard a whisper of a song. In and out and out and in, quick as a flash I weave and spin. Some may mistake and some forget, but I'll have my spider web finished yet. The voice seemed to be coming from the fourth wall. Upon its door lay a curtain of silvery spider web. Here in my shining web I sit to look about and rest a bit. I rest myself a bit and then, quick as a flash, I begin again. Looks like little Teddy had found someone he could ask for help from. Someone little and gray. Mr. Spider, Mr. Spider, do you know where lies the enchanted princess who I am here to rescue? 
Oh, it is so lovely to see that the princess hero is finally here. Where else would the princess be if not behind the emerald door? The most beautiful of all the gems in the world. In his excitement, Teddy rushed to the emerald door, forgetting to even thank his little gray friend. He opened the door and stepped outside, but alas, he found himself back outside the castle gates. Well, Teddy, you tried, but you should know better than to open the emerald door. It's okay. Should we end the story and back home? No, no, no. Let me try once again. Maybe this time I can rescue the princess. All right then, but take this with you this time. Maybe it will come in handy. And remember, beware of that that is little and gray. Teddy is back in the castle. Now the hero is wiser indeed. He may have failed once, but still may succeed. Dull are the emeralds, diamonds are bright. So is his wisdom that shines as light. Of course, the diamond door. As soon as Teddy opened the diamond door, and before he could turn around to thank the spider, he spun down the smooth glass hill, and he was back in the golden garden. So, did you know better? To open the... Diamond door? No, I didn't. You should have paid heed to my warning. Perhaps you aren't the one, Teddy. Looks like we should head home. Let me try one last time. This time I shall find the princess. Okay, one final chance. Take this with you, for it may serve you well. As soon as she handed him the acorn, it magically transforms into a golden goblet with precious stones. Teddy then zap across the flight of glass stairs. He tucked the golden goblet in his back pocket. This time, he never even turned around to wave at the fairy. He was focused. Her voice rung in his ears. Beware of what is little and gray. The hero, wiser than before. Try the red door. Try the red door. Open the door, Ruby, and then you won't have to search for the princess again. No! You've sent me back twice. I'm not getting fooled for a third time. As Teddy stood up to the spider, he stopped spinning his web. And Teddy saw in one corner a little yellow door, hidden behind the entire web the spider had spun. It was clear to him what door to walk through. Teddy reached for his magic sword. The door was strong as steel, but he sliced the door down with one swift move. Teddy cautiously walked inside. He saw a huge golden courtyard and a fountain splashing into a golden basin. Teddy at once saw the golden princess. She was enchanted, asleep on a golden couch, and she was stunning. For a moment, Teddy was dazzled by her. He then collected himself and called out to her. Princess! Princess! Wake up! We must go! The princess did not flinch. Teddy then looked at the nearby fountain and looked back at the princess. He then filled the magic goblet and sprinkled the princess with the water. She gasped as though someone breathed life into her and opened her eyes slowly. Have you come at last? I have, yes. Where is the spider? Teddy's eyes widened too. He looked around and had forgotten about the spider. But the spider had not forgotten about Teddy. He crawled across the floor towards the princess. Teddy sprang in front and stomped his foot upon it. The spider was now nothing more than a gray smudge on the squeaky clean floor. The golden castle rumbled and shook. The princess rose to her feet and held Teddy's hand. You have broken the enchantment. You shall reign over the golden castle and be my king. Oh, but I can't because, mm, because. The princess dragged him across the courtyard reluctantly. Teddy would miss his mother. He couldn't be the Golden King. Hooray! Hooray! Hail, Hail the, the hero. hero! And all of this is yours! As soon as the princess pushes the door and Teddy looked around, the Golden Castle was gone. Poof! Everything vanished. 
the stairs, the voices. He was back in bed, prone, his silk coverlet over his knees. He heard Hannah in the kitchen below. So that is the story of the yellow square. Did you like it? Oh, wasn't it beautiful? He lay for a while thinking and smiling to himself. Wasn't the princess lovely? Teddy then heard his mother's footsteps. As he saw their counterpane fairy, she slowly disappeared behind the bed quilt hill. Oh, please don't go. I have to, dear. Your mother's here. Teddy looked over. His mother had already flung the door open, and she stood there and smiled at Teddy. She looked rested. Oh, my. Oh, my. What a hill to go down. 